Yeah. Thank you very much for the kind introduction, and also thank you uh, very much um, from the organizer side to invite me here for uh, the presentation. So uh, my talk is more along the biology side, but uh, I, I know that um, from yesterday dinner discussion, so not only uh, students who study physics, I think there are also some uh, students who do self-assembly. So uh, if you don't know DNA a lot, it, is, it doesn't matter because here I will utilize DNA basically as the construction material, not only the genetic material. So this is the outline of uh, my talk. Um, I will give you a very short introduction to the field of DNA nanotechnology. Then I will show you our recent efforts along the direction of DNA-based dynamic plasmonic nanosystems. So this is the DNA we know. So if we take a close look at the DNA molecule, so it has these two long polymer backbones made of sugar and phosphide groups. And we also know that um, basically DNA has uh, four um, nucleobases, A, T, and C, and G. So therefore, DNA is actually an excellent uh, genetic material. So then um, what I'm going to talk about is this special technique called DNA origami. And this technique was invented by Paul Rosamond in Caltech in 2006. So what it does is we have a scaffold DNA that is called M13. You will see the video again. It looks like a loop, so a single-stranded DNA. So then we add shorter DNA helper strands into the solution to fold the DNA scaffold. So this is the, the scaffold I have mentioned, M13, is really a long loop, single-stranded. We add these shorter strands into the solution. Then these shorter strands are called helper strands. They can help to fold the DNA scaffold in a desired way according to their different DNA hybridization sites. So then um, that gives us a lot of unique opportunities. For example, we can extend DNA capture strands on the origami. Therefore, if I have functional nanoparticles, for example, gold nanoparticles that we like um, very much, so then we can organize these gold nanoparticles or quantum dots or even single molecules on top of the origami template. And then we can build three-dimensional structures at which. And these three-dimensional structures can also be dynamic in their configurations. So um, compared to the techniques we have uh, used before, for example, top-down techniques like electron beam lithography or focus ion beam etching, then this self-assembly technique gives us a much higher resolution. So it can go down to the uh, resolution of only one to two nanometers. So now after the short introduction, I will show you several uh, research um, projects that we have uh, carried on. So maybe let's first take a look at the workhorses in the cell. So I just give you a brief idea about the workers in our cell. So we have the rotary motor, the ATP synthesis protein. So what it does is it can synthesize uh, ATP. So that is the energy currency in our living cells. So it drives the rotation motion, efficiently pumping protons against their electrochemical gradient. So in our living cells, there are also linear motors. So for example, this kinesin-1 um, molecule, it can perform stepwise walking on microtubules. So it literally has two feet which can walk stepwise on the track. Then uh, there are also sliding motors, for example, in our muscles. So in fact, when you uh, construct, contract or stretching your muscles, then these, uh, these protein motors uh, do the work for you. So they slide the um, microtubules back in the forth, and I will show you the detail. So now our question is, is it possible that we take the direct inspirations from these uh, work, workhouses in the cell to build DNA-based artificial nanosystems, and they have tailored dynamic optical um, functionalities. So this is the motivation of our work. 
The first example I'm going to show you is a dynamic system with the rotation behavior. So this is the schematic uh, drawing. What you see here, this cross-like structure, it is a DNA origami template. So it has kind of many tubular-like structures. So I make it in a very simplified way. So each little <coughs> tube represents a DNA um, helix. So then they are assembled together by finding their right ways. And then in this particular case, it forms a cross. So that means I have two DNA origami bundles. And then these two bundles are connected through their hinge area. And this is connected by the scaffold strand so that we can endow the flexibility. I can change the angle. So then uh, for the goat nanorods, we functionalize the surface of the goat nanorods with the complementary DNA strands. Then after DNA hybridization, these goat nanorods can be hosted on the correct positions on the cross. So why did we use the chiral structure? You may have already realized that this is a chiral structure. So because we would like to track the optical function, uh, the optical property change of the structure, when millions of the structures have like different orientations in the solution. So we need a very sensitive optical spectroscopy method. And we learned from biochemists that the circular diagonal spectra actually are very sensitive to the conformation changes of teeny tiny chiral molecules. So therefore, we build the plasmonic chiral nanostructure. We can make the left-handed structure and also the right-handed structure. So this is the detailed design concept. In this structure, you see the gold, two gold nanorods. If I shine circularly polarized light onto the structure, then plasmons can be excited in these two gold nanorods. Due to uh, close proximity, they can couple very strongly. So that means if I will be able to change the angle between the two gold nanorods, then I will change the optical properties in real time using the, a dynamic way. So then we have also two DNA logs on each uh, on the on both sides. So these two logs can be closed or opened through molecular processes that I'm going to show you. So this is a very simple concept, but I will talk about it quite often in my talk. So therefore, I would rather give you again a short introduction to this process. So this is called toe hold mediated strand displacement. So basically, we just need to have three DNA strands, and we do sequence engineering. Initially, the blue strand is partially complementary with the green strand, but not fully. So then we add the right strand. Through branch migration, this right strand can gradually replace the blue strand and be fully hybridized with the green strand through competition, you can understand in this way. Then with this uh, toe hold mediated strand displacement, we will be able to drive the hybrid plasmonic system in many dynamic ways that I will show you. This is the operation schematic. So initially, the two locks are both open. Then we add the uh, DNA removal strand to initiate the first strand displacement reaction. So then this double-stranded DNA molecule will be unzipped so that here the single-strand DNA in this blue part will be hybridized to its partner on the other arm. After DNA hybridization, then the structure can be locked to the left-handed uh, state. So we can also add the return strand so that the lock is opened. Then the system can go back to the relaxed state. We can also run the system between the relaxed state and the right-handed state. So just make the life easier, I have the animation for you. So this is the process I told you. We add the DNA driving strands into the solution so that here, through the branch migration, that now the lock can be locked. So then if we add the other side of the DNA strands called removal, a uh, return strand, then the lock can be opened. So then this uh, little DNA structure can carry the two gold nanorods, and then um, they can make the rod to rotate in different ways. So now let's uh, take a look at the TEM images. 
This is the DNA template. I have told you they look like crosses. Then we functionalize gold nano rods on top. So each template has two gold nano rods. So now we track the optical um, spectra. These are the typical circular dichroism spectra of our system. Then we track at this particular position where we have the CD maximum, so around 750 nanometers. When we add the DNA driving strands into the solution, then we can switch the system clearly between uh, among three different states. So this is the left-handed state, relaxed state, and right-handed state. So we do see that there is the system degradation over time, and that is something we don't want to have. So uh, this is due to the fact that we need to add the chemical fuels into the solution. Then this builds the dilution effect, and this gives rise to the signal decrease. So then this is not uh, something we want. So then other than the chemical uh, method, we thought about other energy input. So in this case, we utilized light as the energy input. So in order to make our plasmonic system on origami um, light sensitive, then we, in, we need a, um, the, this kind of light switch. In this case, we utilize also benzene. Just briefly um, tell you about the unique property of also benzene. So this molecule is very small, so of course, it has two, uh, two states through photoisomerization. What it does is, in the trans state, it has this planar um, molecular configuration. And if I shine UV light, through light-induced molecular motion, this planar molec molecule configuration will be transformed into this three-dimensional twisted configuration. If I shine visible light, then the system can go back from the cis state back to trans state. The conformation change is on the order of 3.5 angstroms, very small. So what we would like to do next is we want to build a light-driven plasmonic nano system. So what um, our motivation is we would like to amplify such teeny tiny molecular motion by our DNA host nanostructures and then translate the molecular motion into reversible optical functions with much larger modu modulation. So we have known uh, the transformation between the trans and cis states of the ozobenzene molecules. So next, we intercalate these ozobenzene molecules in between DNA bases. So now we form this pseudo-complementary DNA duplex. This duplex can also be opened or closed through UV and visible light. It's very robust. So next, we intercalate this also benzene modified DNA piece right here in red color onto our origami template. So now our DNA uh, plasmonic hybrid structure becomes really light sensitive. So that means if I shine UV light onto the structure, this lock can be opened. So because the also benzene molecules in the beginning, they are planary, intercalating re regarding each other. So if I shine UV light, these also benzene molecules will be twisted. They will push the two DNA strands apart so that the DNA duplex will be dehybridized. So that means this structure will be in the um, relaxed state. The lock is opened. So if I shine visible light, then the structure will go back to the uh, locked state. So then this is the experiment uh, we have carried out. We shine visible and UV light to write and erase the handed uh, structure alternatively. Simultaneously, we utilize the circularly polarized light to probe or to rate the handedness change uh, during the entire process. So again, these are the typical CD spectra for the locked state and the relaxed state. So the experiment turned out to be very robust. We just bought the light tor torches from the supermarket, and then we did the experiment with these uh, light torches. So now you can see that the problem has solved. So in this case, we don't see um, significant system degradation at all, because now we utilize light 
as the energy input. So light does not produce any chemical wastes in the solution. So that is why here the switching is very reproducible over different cycles. So now um, you may wonder, I have promised to show you the mimicking of the rotation of the ATP synthesis machine, which sits on the membrane. But until now, what I have shown you is only the switching between two different angles. So this is still not enough. So therefore, I uh, decided to show you our um, unpublished results. So here, we have uh, made a full rotation system. So it's quite complicated, so I will get you through. We call this plasmonic clock because in this case, here the top goes nano rod can perform a full rotation from zero degree to 360 degrees. So it has this stator part, so that means here the goat nano rod is immobilized on this origami template. So on the template we have a ring shaped track and then on top of it we have the router. In this router is used to host the second goat nano rod. In order to make a compact and also very efficient uh, rotation system, the two parts are connected using the scaffold DNA. So then on the uh, origami bundle, we have two feet in the um, black color. So these two feet will try to find their ways to interact with the DNA strands that we call footholds, so that here the, the goat nano rod can rotate. Um, cl clockwise or con counterclockwise. So therefore, it is very similar to a clock. So this is the design schematic. On top of the track, we have uh, 16 uh, bending sites or footholds. So they form eight pairs because I have two feet. I only need two positions to land. So for example, um, positions one and one prime, they are the same. So that means now, if I start from positions one and one prime, the two feet are hybridized on these two footholds. Then we add the blocking strand and the removal strand into the solution. Then the two feet will be released from positions one and one prime, and it will search the next bending size to position two and two prime. So then in the end, it will perform an angle of pi over eight either clockwise or counterclockwise, we can control it. So yesterday, when I actually landed in the Madrid uh, airport, I saw this uh, airport radar system. So this is not exactly the, um, the system I saw from the airport because the landing was so fast, I could not take the video. So I got this video from um, YouTube. So this is very similar to what uh, I'm presenting. So this is the router, and then this is the stator. So the router can really rotate uh, in a controlled way, but on the nanometer scale in our system. So then this is the experimental result slide. Uh, we uh, in situ probe the circular diagonal spectral changes over time when the router rotates against the stator from zero to two pi. So then um, this is the summary of the data points that we track at 732 nanometers. So basically we can see this oscillation in dependence on the angle because we change the configuration from zero to two pi. So this is not exactly the sine function because our system has a left-handed preference. So I don't want to go into the details. So this is about the design. So basically because the the bottom goat nano rod on the DNA origami template has a left-handed preference towards the 11 o'clock position. However, in general, we can see nicely the uh, full rotation of the system. I also want to demonstrate to you the reversibility. So, for example, in this case, uh, instead of uh, clockwise uh, rotation, we first do the counterclockwise rotation then at this uh, ending point, we drive the system back along uh, the clockwise position. And one sees that the data points are very similar in these two directions. So that means we can drive our structures in the system, so nearly all to the different states, in a very high fi uh, fidelity way. 
So another thing I also would like to uh, show you is that instead of uh, stepwise rotation, we can also do hopping. So imagine now if I want to clamp a staircase, I can do the, uh, the clamping stepwise, or I can keep some intermediate steps. For example, I clamp every two steps, every three steps. So then here, the black line shows you that I just do, in a normal way, I do the stepwise rotation. So now if I skip, for example, position two by hopping from position one to position three directly because my feet or my legs are long enough so that I can really do this step skipping by hopping. It shows that um, it doesn't make a big difference for the experimental data. That means most of the structures can skip by hopping position two and arrive position three. However, things become different if I skip two um, foothold positions by keeping position two at, and position three. It shows that a fraction, although it's quite small, a fraction of the structures cannot reach position four by hopping anymore. This difference becomes much larger if I skip positions two, three, four. So the router has a hard time to find a position to, uh, to be hybridized at, at um, position five. However, we do see that some of the structures can really reach still because we see the uh, signal difference or dropping. This is because we are dealing with a thermodynamic system after all. So in the system, although uh, I show that the static state only, in fact, the goat nanorods, they all have the Brownian motion. So that means although the legs of the uh, goat nanorod are not long enough, but they kind of wobble all the time into the solution. So there is still the chance for some of the structures, structures they can reach station five. So then if we uh, continue to do the experiment, if I uh, light the system, skip positions two, three, four, five, interestingly, the difference even becomes smaller. So this is because of the symmetry of our design. This is a clock. So that means here, is the, the rod is kind of smart. I would not make a hard time to rotate from position one to posi position six because my feet are the same. So that means I would do the other way wrong. I could just do the uh, anti uh, counterclockwise from one prime to um, position six. So that means position four and position six they are, in principle, uh, the same regarding the rotation. All right, so then I have spent some time on the rotation property. I also briefly um, tell you about the, our dynamic control for the walking behavior. So this is the kinesin molecule I showed you before. So this guy is really, uh, so right now when you sit in the room, this guy is doing work for you. So what it does is it carries portings as cargoes and deliver them to different target destinations so that we have the living cells. So then in our case, we have made a plasmonic walker. So this is the walker. So the walker has all over covered with uh, DNA strands. And this is again the stator. This is the track uh, he will be uh, walking at. So here, because we do optics, and here the spacing of different stations is seven nanometers, and seven nan nanometers is well below the optical diffraction limit. So what we want to do is we want to utilize just a simple standard optical spectroscopy to track the stepwise walking of the gold nanorod on top of the DNA origami. So this is the design schematic. I told you that in the solution, the nanostructures, they um, have the Brownian motions. They have to do this. So therefore, in order to um, make a quite stable optical probing process, so every time we light the walker step on two rows of DNA um, rows. So for example, row A and row B, because the dimension of our, our gold nanorods is 10 nanometers by 35 nanometers. The spacing is seven nanometers. I want to make sure that the gold nanorod, when it walks, it doesn't wobble so much so that it would disturb my optical spectroscopy tracking. 
So now this is the walking principle. So basically, we add the DNA uh, fuel strands into the solution. So what it does is, so the gold nano rod can release the foot from position A, and simultaneously, the new foot can be bound onto position C, and by uh, making a seven nanometer uh, forward walking ahead. This is the animation. So we add the DNA strands into the solution. So now the foot is lift up, and then the new foot can be uh, hybridized onto the new position. And in this way, it can be rolling uh, along the way, and by performing seven nanometers ahead or backward, that I will show you. This is the <coughs> experimental tracking. So this is that means here the rod can go from the left-handed version by crossing the a carol version and then to the uh, right-handed version. So although the configuration change between different states is only seven nanometers, so we found that the CD spectral uh, CD spectra are sensitive enough to distinguish these nano steps in uh, optical spectra. So then we track the CD signal right here at this uh, maximum, and we can indeed identify these different uh, nano steps in a very continuous way. And then if we want to, we can also um, um, drag the goat, uh, the goat nano rod as the walker from the forward direction and then back to the backward direction. And then we can immediately see the CD increase again. So that identifies that the walker has changed its walking direction. So then last part uh, is the third topic I have promised. So this is the dynamic system with sliding. So as I said, so this happens uh, when we do the muscle contraction or stretching. So um, there is also another uh, protein molecule in this case. So this is kinesin-5. So what it does is when well, our living cells, they are split. For example, a mother cell is split to generate two daughter cells. Then these kinesin-5 motors, they can cross these two microtubules. And they slide these microtubules back and forth in uh, the opposite ways. So this is the behavior. So uh, if we look into this, this is the uh, protein I have told you. It has four motor domains, and they can be attached onto these microtubules, and then slide these anti-parallel microtubules like really in the opposite way. So now uh, we have also um, made this analog. So we utilize gold nanoparticles as the, um, the slider, and then they slide these two origami templates back and forth in a very reversible way. So here, this is powered by DNA hybridization. So of course, in the biological systems, it is powered by the ATP hydrolysis. So this is the one-to-one -one, uh, analogy between nature and artificial systems. So this is the design schematic. So you see these two gold nanocrystals. And we have these bending sites which are uh, assigned anti-parallel to each other because we want to do the anti-parallel sliding. In order to probe the sliding behavior, at one side of the structure we have attached a frag pair so that we know the distance changes optically. So this is the sliding uh, uh, principle. I won't go into the details. So roughly, we add the DNA fuels so then uh, the function of the DNA fuels is um, that they can make sure that the, the feet of the nanocrystal can be released correctly, and then the feet can land to the new positions correctly. I think the animation will be much helpful in this way. So these are the two gold nanocrystals I told you. They can work in a very coherent and also a very coordinated way to slide the two origami um, templates in a very um, kind of anti-parallel way back and forth. But these are the TEM images. So this is especially, this is the reconstructed image um, for the initial state from um, more than 100 structures. And we see that here, the, um, the two origami bundles or filaments are very symmetric regarding uh, each other. 
after two sliding steps, then we can see that it introduces the displacement because it has been slided. So next, we did the optical monitoring of the sliding dynamics using uh, the, uh, the fret uh, technique. So basically, for example, if I start from the symmetric case, and then I slide to, the, uh, to my right, so then um, here, the dye molecule will gradually approach the gold nanoparticle. And simultaneously, the dye molecule will also be away from my acceptor. And all these, uh, both of the effects will give me the threat signal changes. So I, again, because of the time limit, I just want to convince you that with fright, we can track the different sliding dynamics um, in real time. We also did theoretical calculations. It confirmed that by adding the fright uh, contribution and also the quenching uh, contribution between the dye molecule and also the uh, gold nanoparticle, then we can um, have a very good agreement between the experiment and theory. So uh, maybe I skip that slide. So in fact, in the end, we also put uh, different DNA locks at the two sides. What we want to study is how the gold nanocrystals will behave regarding sliding when we have external uh, constraints. It turned out that these gold nanocrystals can even overcome the force introduced by these two, uh, these four uh, locks, and they can still behave like the sli uh, sliding behavior. Just nice uh, images to show. So you can see that without the locks, the two origami bundles are quite parallel to each other. And then when we introduce the four locks, although they can still slide the origami templates, then uh, we see actually quite nice uh, visible binding of the DNA origami templates. So right now, uh, we are doing the force spectroscopy to identify how much force the gold nanocrystal need to overcome to initiate the sliding behavior. So then this is the uh, summary of um, our work. So what I have presented, or I try to convince you that by the combination of uh, DNA nanotechnology and also plasmonics, we can build many um, artificial dynamic systems to mimic the, um, the porting motors in our living cells. So uh, right now, we are utilizing these artificial dynamic systems for robotic uh, drug delivery for uh, cancer cell treatment. And this is the uh, group photo. Um, then I would like to thank all my students for their hard work and also all the uh, funding agencies. Thank you very much for your attention.